Founded near the end of the First World War, the RAF have been protecting the skies over Britain for a hundred years. And so to celebrate this, the Military Aviation Museum at Tangmere is holding a special exhibition. There were two organisations, the Royal Flying Corps, which was an army organisation, and the Royal Naval Air Service. And then, because basically, because of the Zeppelin raids and the bomber raids, the German bomber raids, um, Lloyd George was under great pressure to do something about the, what was happening with the, the bombing. And um, a, 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 it's actually a South African, uh, a General Smuts, was tasked with uh, looking into this. And he produced a report which made two recommendations, one to form an air ministry to, look, to overlook all aerial warfare and to form, to combine the Royal Flying Corps and the Royal Naval Air Service into the Royal Air Force. Around the same time as the RAF was being formed, Tangmere was also being transformed into an aerodrome. But, as it turns out, not for the Brits. It was actually built for the Americans, which is quite surprising, because the Americans on the 1st of April, sorry, in April of 1917, joined the war, and um, they had little experience of, of aerial combat at that time, and um, they were going to fly uh, bombers, uh, night, uh, night bombers, and they were over here to learn how to fly them. And Tamir was one of the training depots, they called them, selected to, for that. And the land itself was actually owned by the American government, and the Crown had to buy it back after the war. And it was a fighter this most of the time, and Fighter Command eventually left in 1958. But a very important airfield, of course. But the Americans weren't the first to use this aerodrome. There's actually three Royal Flying Corps squadrons, and it's 91, 92 and 93 squadrons. Uh, and 92 eventually went to France with an SE-5 as their aircraft. And we have an example behind me of a replica copy of an SE-5. And it's very accurate. It was built by the engineers here about three years ago. During the last 100 years, the aircraft has changed dramatically, and thankfully so have safety standards. Well, it's very different when you look inside the cockpit of this aircraft compared with the cockpit, let's say, of a Typhoon. Yes, yeah, it's considerably different. But their flying is flying, and um, if you could fly this sort of aeroplane, you, it was, there were many problems in flying these sort of aeroplanes, of course. Um, first of all, they, uh, you were, often they were flown above 10,000 feet. So there was no oxygen. Um, it was incredibly cold because it's an open cockpit, of course. So you were incredibly cold. And you had, um, the, the armament you had was very limited, machine guns. And, uh, of course, you know, you experienced the G-forces. And, uh, yeah, it's been extremely difficult. Just after the REF was formed, 1st of April, it was actually six days later... There was a mid-air collision between two aircraft of that squadron, 92 squadron, that were working up. Uh, one of the pilots was flying a Sopwith Pup, and the other one was flying an Avro 504. And they had a mid-air collision as the Pup was turning onto final approach and hit the other aeroplanes. And all three pilots were, were killed, sadly. So if you want to take a look at the early days of those flying aces, the exhibition opens in time for Easter. Well, it starts on Good Friday. And it goes right the way through for, until the 15th of April, so a couple of weeks. And, uh, it's a, and it's, there's no extra charge to, to go and see it. So please come and see it. Richard Stringer, That's TV.